Hey, if you're thinking about getting one of these 12.1 or 14.4 inch Tesla style screens for your vehicle, well, I've had mine for six months and I'm gonna do a review on it and give you the pros and cons and tell you why you should or shouldn't buy one of these things. Let's get at it. Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. And for my longtime subscribers, welcome back. So if you didn't know, I decided to take the plunge and upgrade to one of these 14.4 inch Tesla style screens uh, from a company called Autotech Pro. I got it here in my 2016 F-150 and I've had it now for about six months and I have been getting a lot of requests to um, talk about this radio, the pros and cons. I, have, I get questions all the time about the video that I posted. If you haven't seen it, check it out. I talk about how to install this thing and some of the basic features. In this video, I'm going to dive into pretty much how the radio has been holding up since I've had it for nearly six months right now. And I'll go over some of the most frequently asked questions and hopefully these will answer some of the questions that you may have if you're considering buying one of these things. I'm going to try and keep this thing as concise as possible because I know I tend to ramble on sometimes but after all the questions that I have I don't know how short I'm going to keep it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave timestamps below as usual and um, you can jump from section to section based on what type of questions you guys may have or concerns that you may have. Now listen before I begin I just wanted to let you guys know so if you do think about buying it and you want to purchase it there's a link in the description with the special coupon code that you know it's for you guys you guys can get a special discount um, if you purchase it from them and I'll leave links on the screen here somewhere or I'll leave the promo code here just make sure you use that code because you will get an extra discount and it's just for you guys so like I said in order to address all the questions I'm gonna try and break up this video into four sections first I'm gonna talk about the boot up time and that will include the boot up time for your radio boot up time for wireless Apple CarPlay and the boot up time for your backup camera whenever you put it in reverse once we go through the boot up times I'm gonna go ahead and talk about the wireless Apple CarPlay or wireless Android Auto depends on which one you have and I'll cover questions for Maps, Google Maps, um, the phone, and your music, whether it's Pandora, Spotify, Apple Music, whatever it is. Um, I'll show you kind of how the screen works and the features on that. Then I'll go over the factory sync integration, which will cover you know your basic features like your radio, your Sirius XM, USB, wired CarPlay, if that's what you decide to do and I'll go over the Android portion which to me is probably the best portion about this radio and then we'll talk about the home screen the apps the custom home screen that I have video playback of files that you may have and the built-in GPS and Google Maps or whatever other maps that you may be wanting to load on here and then the last part of the video I'll talk about the troubleshooting there's some uh, questions that people asked about regarding like the SIM card and stuff like that, I'll talk about it. And then the last part of the video, I'll go over the pros and cons. Um, so I can talk about some of the things that I ran into, the issues and some of the things that w worked out better than I thought, just to kind of steer you guys in the direction whether you want to purchase this thing or not. At the end, I'll do a little recap and say my piece. And yeah, hopefully this will give you guys a better understanding of all the features that this radio has as we go through the video I'll also talk about the performance of the radio the volume controls the AC controls and I'll also talk about aftermarket amplifier connections if that's something that you guys are interested in all right so without further ado let's go jump into this video and let's check it out the first request I always get is the boot up time for this radio and it's going to vary based on a couple of things that I've found out depending on how long you leave the radio if it's for a long period of time it's going to take a little bit longer but the cool thing about this uh, radio that I find is that it seems as though this radio has some sort of uh, standby mode so that when you turn off the vehicle you know the next time you're getting the next time you get into it on your day on your day-to-day -day activities it boots up pretty quick I haven't actually timed it so I'm actually going to time it for this video and what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and start the vehicle and wait for it to load up to the home screen. And what will happen after that is you'll see it start to load the wireless Android Apple Play. So I'm going to let it run through the whole boot sequence. And then I'll talk about once I see it um, booting up into the home menu. And then we'll see how long that takes. And then once it goes into the Android Auto or wireless CarPlay, we'll stop the timer there. All right, let's go ahead and boot this thing up and see how long it takes. Thank you. 
All right, so there's the home screen. And then let's see how long it takes for it to boot into the wireless Apple CarPlay. It should start looking for it now. There you go. And let's see how long it actually takes to connect. All right, and that's it. And now we're into the wireless Apple CarPlay. Uh, the next thing I'm gonna do is put it in reverse and you can see how long it actually takes to get into reverse once I put it in reverse. As you can see here, it's pretty instantaneous. It looks similar to the factory and that's about it. Um, the next one I'm gonna do is actually just to turn on the car and put it in reverse as if you were backing out of your driveway and I'll show you guys exactly how long that takes. All right, let's go ahead and start the car and just put it in reverse and see how long it takes before the backup camera kicks in. There you go, that's it. So hope this answered all your questions regarding the backup camera and the startup of the radio. Let's jump into the next section. All right, now we can talk about the wi wireless Apple CarPlay. Once you got your system booted up, it pretty much looks like your regular Apple CarPlay if you're used to this. You have all your apps here. Uh, it's very responsive. You can see you swipe through. You got your usual suspects here, your Sirius XM. If you have the app, um, this works as well. Also, you have your Spotify, Audible, your settings, your calendar, your music, your maps, your Google Maps, Pandora, um, whatever you have, your phone. Let's talk a little bit about maps because I get a lot of questions about that. So if you hit on Apple Maps, you can see here, it is displayed in full screen and you can search. It's got a full keyboard. You can search for gas stations, parking, restaurants, coffee, groceries. And you also have a manual keyboard that you can type in an address and it will search for your address or wherever your destination is. It is turn by turn, so it does uh, voice over the factory speakers. So it works perfect. Um, and it does give you turn by turn directions, just like your regular Apple CarPlay would be as well. Um, if you're back out here, we can also look at Google Maps. If you click on Google Maps, it's the same thing. It's going to give you your street view. You can do 3D views. You can change the settings, just like you would on any um, wireless CarPlay or Android Auto interface. It works the same. I love the fact that it's full screen and it does switch between dark mode and light mode depending on what your system is set up as. Or you can set it you know, to be always in dark mode. Whichever way you like, it works perfectly. Um, we'll talk about the phone features. Again, it's just like a car wireless. It's just like a wired CarPlay. You have all your favorites, your recents, all your contacts. You can go through your contacts. It has a keyboard dialer, check your voicemail all the usual suspects and the phone quality is pretty good now it does use a standard mic um, it does use your factory mic um, and the mic input is here so you know it sounds as though you're just using the factory mic and also your music you can see you know you can go to your apple music or your pandora stations and everything works the same again the responsiveness is what i like and again, it works just like normal with your toggle between the different screens here. You know, Apple Music, Amazon Music, whatever you have, your messages come through and are displayed whenever you get an incoming message. Um, and you can also toggle between the split screen, which is just like on your Android Auto or your Apple CarPlay. Whichever map you're using, it will display in the upper, in the upper portion. And you have your um, music that's playing here and directions and whatever calendar events that you may have going on here. All right, that is wireless Apple CarPlay in a nutshell. All right, now let's jump into the factory sync integration, which to me was the selling point for this radio. I always wanted to make sure that whatever radio I put in here would retain all the sync features that I had, and this thing checks all the boxes. So let's go ahead and I'll show you how to do it. On mine it's going to be a little bit different on yours when you get it from the factory but I'll explain it to you so once you go to the home screen here this is going to be your home screen um, yours may look a little bit different I'll talk to you about why um, but they have a app on here called console which is a native Ford sync app and that's what integrates your Ford sync display so I just renamed mine you can see here it just says Ford sync 
So once you click on that, it's going to go ahead and it's going to start up the factory radio. And as you can see here, I know you guys are familiar with this screen. This is your factory screen and how it looks from Ford. So the original display is here. This is what your radio would have looked like. And down below here would have been your actual buttons for your climate control and for your media here. So again, the integration is seamless. Uh, let me give you a little volume here. You can hear the volume works fine just like it did on your factory. Let me go ahead and turn the sound down a little bit for you guys so you can hear me a little bit better. Um, but as you can see here, it looks just like the factory. The sources work the same way. You can toggle between your AM radio, your FM radio. For you guys who are asking about Sirius, your Sirius XM stays the same. I have all my presets here. Everything works the same just as it did when it came from the factory. You, have your, you don't have a CD player anymore. <laughs> because obviously you had to get rid of it but again I was willing to make that sacrifice your Bluetooth if you have your phone paired but I'll talk to you a little bit about that because I know you guys are gonna ask me so we'll forget about this for a little while because you're gonna have to pair your wireless CarPlay with your Bluetooth so you can't have both of them paired at the same time but I'm assuming if you have your wireless CarPlay paired you're not gonna need the Bluetooth for the radio because you'll be using it for your wireless CarPlay Again, your USB, if you have one, I have a USB stick plugged in to the factory USB outlets down below the radio. Those remain the same. Nothing has changed. Um, we'll go back here. You can see your climate stays the same. So for me, you can also actually change your, you can actually use this screen to adjust your climate controls just like you did on the factory. Um, if you had your phone connected via Bluetooth on the sync system, then you, you, your contacts would show up here. Navigation, if you have it, works the same way. It uses the factory navigation system that was built in and it works just the same. If you had any apps like um, Ford My, My Pass or whatever it's called, I'm not, I don't remember the name, but it would all work here and it would stay the same as it did when you had your factory unit. One of the cool things that I liked about this is I have um, heated and massage seats in mine and ambient lighting. You still can control your ambient lighting just like you did before and it works the same. Also, you had, also if you have your heated seats, everything works the same. I have um, trailer backup assist. So when I engage it during reverse, it functions the same as if I did. It functions the same just as factory. So for me, this was the selling point. Everything stayed factory, looked factory, and I can control everything. So for me, this is a plus, especially if you guys have a Ford vehicle, you know how much um, the Ford Sync integrates with the system. This was an awesome selling point for me. One of the things I, get, I got a question about was um, if you don't have wireless CarPlay and you wanted wired CarPlay, uh, what you would do if you want to do that is you would actually plug in your USB just like you did on the factory and connect it to your cell phone and it would bring up CarPlay but it would be in the factory system so the wired CarPlay would come up here and you can control it just like you did before you had wireless CarPlay it works the same way just remember that you won't be able to use both the wired and the wireless CarPlay at the same time for obvious reasons for obvious reasons because you're using wired CarPlay. But apart from that, everything works perfectly. So far, um, I ha I'll talk about um, my journey with this radio a little bit later. But for now, let's jump into my favorite part of the radio, which is the home screen and the home screen apps. Once you get your radio, you're gonna notice that you'll have a home button down here. This home button lives in the Android um, ecosystem. Once you hit that, you'll get to your home screen. Now this is where you control everything. And this part is what makes this radio an Android, basically an Android tablet. So on my home screen here, I've customized it. You guys are gonna ask, but I'm running a program called Nova Launcher. And if you guys want to learn how to customize this, uh, leave some comments below and maybe I'll address it in another video, show you how I set this thing up. Where I got a lot of help from, and I suggest you guys, if you guys are interested in this radio, you do the same is um, go to the F-150 uh, forums. You can just Google F-150 forums and um, you can search in there for AutoTech Pro. There are some really cool people on that forum and they help me um, kind of navigate this radio as far as setting it up, 
using Nova Launcher, what background themes, all the different stuff. But for the most part, this is what your home screen is going to look like. Um, it's going to be like any Android tablet. I have all my apps here. I have the app that goes to my factory sync and I have the app that goes to my wireless Apple CarPlay. So if I want to just jump back to wireless Apple CarPlay, I just hit that and it just jumps into wireless CarPlay and I can go back to home. On the home screen here, you have two options. You can obviously tether to a Wi-Fi hotspot. Um, it's just like an Android. You can click on Wi-Fi and connect to uh, your phone as a hotspot or, um, or if you have a wireless hotspot in your car, you can connect to it there. And this will give your tablet internet connectivity. Now, once you have internet connectivity, you can go ahead and use this just like you would any Android tablet. You can see here, I have a LTE signal in the top, which I have an actual SIM card that I purchased and um, it's in the glove box. If you saw my install video, you saw where it is, but I have the SIM card placed in there. So I have internet connectivity at all times, which gives me the ability to um, use my Apple Music without having to use wireless CarPlay because it's built into the app. Or I could use Pandora or you know YouTube or whatever I want to do you know, without having to have my phone in the car because I'm always connected to the internet. Google Maps works just like how it would on any Android tablet. You click on the Google Maps here, it'll come up. You guys can search, do everything. This just looks like your Google Map app on your phone or on your tablet if you're familiar with that. And again, it's customized. It works with daytime or dark mode depending on the, your vehicle settings. And yeah, it works fine. Now, if you don't have Wi-Fi connected, this will still work because if you saw my install video and you install the factory GPS, this will tether to the factory GPS and it will work just fine. So uh, let's go back and you can see all the apps here. You can search Chrome and you know you can jump to any website, uh, do whatever you want to do. It works just like you would on any tablet. All the features work the same. You have your car settings, which it's built into this radio. You can adjust your massage seats if you have them or your ambient lighting. So that works as well here. Um, you have an equalizer, which I put on this screen so you can adjust the volume and the sound settings. I'll talk to you guys a little bit more about that because I have an aftermarket amplifier in my truck and I'll show you guys what that actually looks like. Settings, this is going to be your Android settings. If you're familiar with an Android tablet, you can go through and do a bunch of stuff on here just as you would if you had a regular tablet. Uh, a lot of people ask me about video playback. So in the glove compartment, I have it, two USBs that are connected to this radio that can be used to update the firmware on this radio or as a mass storage media. I have a USB stick in my glove box and it's loaded with some music and videos. And I can show you here what it looks like on video playback. As you can see here, I got a bunch of movies here loaded in here. Obviously you can tell I have kids because this is pretty much for kids. So we can run one of these movies and let me give you a little volume. Yep, the music works, the volume works fine. And basically you have a built-in movie player in your car. Now let me exit this again. There are many different video players you can use. I just use VLC, but you can use whatever you want. Let me just go over a couple different things here. Um, as you can see, you know, you have your home button and your back button and your app switcher buttons um, located here. Um, you know, if you're familiar with Android, you can scroll through your different apps that are loaded and go back and forth. Um, if you notice the buttons, uh, you have actual physical buttons, which is what I like. And you can see here, um, the volume, as you can see here, the temperature changes when I rotate the, um, when I rotate the temperature, um, I can put it on auto. It ups the, it, it increases the fan speed. You can lower the fan speed manually, just like that. Um, you can turn it to sync, to dual, so you can control both sides. Um, it's very responsive. 
and of course the volume works here when you're not on the factory sink and you're in any of the other interfaces you can see here the volume increases down here or you can touch the volume on the radio itself to to lower and increase the volume uh, the AC controls will work just like you had it before with your buttons down here but you also have the option like on a Tesla to control your climate here which will include your heated steering wheel if you have one your different zones the different uh, climate settings and you can also and you can also lower and increase the temperature here on each side it just depends on what you want to do yeah but you have the option I've got a lot of requests about aftermarket amplifiers and unfortunately I have one installed in my truck I'm going to show you how the aftermarket amp connects in this system here and yeah let me show you exactly what it looks like all right so behind the seat the sink connects all through here. Um, the inputs come in from the sink system down here to my audio control. It's a LC7i. And basically all the inputs come in from the factory radio here. And it's converted to RCA outputs up top here. And the reason why we need this is because there's no audio outputs from the radio. So this does the conversion. Um, everything stays factory. So if I ever take this out of my car, you'll still be able to use the factory radio. All I need to do is just reconnect my audio from my sync um, back to where they originally came from. And those RCA outputs go to my amp, which is located under here. I got a 5.1 channel amplifier in here and it's powering two 10 inch, or actually it's one 10 inch kicker sub with a passive subwoofer here. And the outputs from the amp to the speakers go to the door or actually they go back behind the seat here which connect to the original factory um, speakers i changed the speakers in my door they're all six by nine kickers but apart from that that's what it's going to look like if you have an aftermarket system in your car any pro shop can do this for you so that's what i did um, i tried to keep everything as factory as possible and that's what you have to do if you're going to use the sync system, which it integrates perfectly, so it works out well. All right, let's talk a little bit about troubleshooting. One of the questions I get a lot about, asked a lot about, is the SIM card. So look, on mine, let's see if you guys can see it here. Yeah, the, the SIM card, the SIM card uh, goes under here, and this thing slides back and clamps the SIM card down. So make sure you put your SIM card in properly. Um, that's the first thing and once you have the sim card in what you want to do is you're going to find on your radio the settings of the actual um, head unit here which is not the android settings but it's just the actual settings of the radio i think mine falls under here you're going to get an interface that looks somewhat like this once you get to this page you're going to see a button that says save and reboot once you have your sim card in you're going to hit save and reboot and the, the unit is going to shut off and power cycle itself. And that's what worked for me because once I put my SIM card in originally, it did nothing. Nothing came up, nothing happened. But once I put it in, made sure it was connected properly and um, set in place and did a save and reboot. Boom. Once it started up, I saw the LTE um, logo pop up. Of course, you need to make sure you activate your SIM, whichever carrier you get. Um, just activate it first before you put it in but once it's activated and you put it in do a save and reboot and it should boot right up um, another thing if your radio is glitching or doing something or locked up for any reason they also provided a reset button and all you need to do is use like a paper clip or something um, and put it in there's a mic button up top and a reset button down below make sure you don't put a paper clip in your mic uh, you don't want to damage your mic um, and just press it push, press the reset button and your uh, radio will reboot all right um, as far as troubleshooting those are pretty much the two major things that I've encountered when people are leaving comments if you guys have any other questions or comments leave them down below or any troubleshooting questions that you may have I'll try and answer them um, and if I get enough then I'll do a video uh, walking you guys through it also you can see here uh, this is the USB that I have and that's the USB stick that I have in there 
you also have an extra one just in case you want to um, update you need to update the firmware on here that's what this is for also um, one thing that I need to note is that these USBs don't work with wired CarPlay you have to use the USBs that come from the factory mine are below my radio yours may be in your glove box or in your center console I'm not sure but that's the only way you can use wired CarPlay with this system apart from that I'm not sure what else I can say about troubleshooting all right um, let's wrap this up and I'll talk to you guys a little bit about the pros and cons all right welcome back I hope you guys enjoyed the review and kind of the run through about the performance of this radio and what I'd like to talk to you guys next about are a little bit of the pros and cons to help guide you along the way to see if this may be something that you guys want to purchase um, if you do want to purchase it remember check the link in the description or on the screen here there's a promo code especially for you uh, to give you guys a discount on this radio let's start out by going over the pros of this unit so for me um, the pros would include wireless carplay um, I use I drive a lot so I like to have my phone basically and my radio basically an extension of my phone so for me wireless carplay the sync integration definitely is a pro this thing works just like the factory I don't have any complaints about it so far um, my trailer backup my reverse camera my heated steering wheel massage seats ambient lighting Sirius XM all of those things are retained um, in the factory sync if you have a Ford pass all those features that come with sync will be integrated in the radio and will function just as normal uh, the responsiveness the radio works well the boot up time is pretty good in my opinion um, I don't remember how fast the factory was but I can't see it being much faster than that if not this might be actually a little bit faster um, again the touchscreen uh, climate control gives me the functionality to do it while I'm on there I'm not looking down for buttons it's all at eye level and I can um, uh, swipe through the controls for my climate controls uh, a full screen maps whether you're online or offline um, using the integrated um, GPS from the unit or the factory GPS if you want to go through the sync system you so you're able to use the GPS with or without a SIM card uh, just depending on you know what your preferences are the display works it functions with your lights when you turn it turn on your lights it goes into dark mode or when it senses the brightness go down um, at night it turns into dark mode or you can set it to be dark mode all the time I like the flexibility of that um, I like the ability to add aftermarket cameras if your car or truck doesn't come with cameras you can add backup cameras or front cameras to your screen and it will work when you shift it in reverse or you switch camera systems I like the capabilities and the ability to do that I like the ability to have a, f um, a physical reset button in case your system locks up and you can't get to reset the, the system you actually have a physical reset button for me I thought that was pretty cool that way you know if anything goes wrong I can reset it oh another thing that I like about this unit is you know there seems to be a lot of them online that look similar maybe they're running the same software but I like the fact that I purchased this from um, a company and I was able to contact them for customer support some people say the customer support isn't that good but I haven't had any issues in the beginning um, I had um, which I'll talk about in the cons um, but they were able to help me you know resolve those issues along with you know the F-150 forums but um, having somebody on the other end to you know talk about your order and what you're what you're not liking was for me one of the pros well you can't have pros without cons right so let me talk about some of the cons that I have with this radio some of them you may not find as cons but for me I'm just going to list them as cons one you don't have a physical volume button on the unit some of you might be wanting to you know some people have just got used to turn up and turn down the volume this doesn't have one it's a touch screen or you got to use your steering wheel controls I've gotten used to it so it's not that big a con for me but um, yeah now I have the 14.4 inch um, screen so you know I consider this a con the buttons up top are kind of hidden I wouldn't say hidden but 
you you have to kind of look up over on top of the radio to see the buttons that are there if you have the 12.1 inch display they're angled just like factory so this con won't apply to you another con that i could say sometimes there's a issue between switching between the sync and the wireless carplay audio i think there's a handoff um, problem sometimes it's a delay um, when you're switching if you keep going back and forth you know multiple times which I've only had this happen a couple times but that was one of the cons that I see I don't know how they can change that but you know I leave it up to the pros it sounds like a software firmware integration I don't know something but it hasn't bothered me it happens a couple times but other than that it works fine Another con that I find is that there's no auxiliary outputs on this factory radio for aftermarket amplifiers. Now, that may sound like a con, but it really isn't because, um, yes, there are other uh, radios that have auxiliary outputs for your aftermarket amplifier, but it doesn't integrate with sync. And if you know how the the factory works is that the sink is controlled you know in the back here um, I don't know how they'll be able to get away from that because it's using the outputs from the sink um, unit itself so they would have to develop some kind of software that would have or some sort of hardware that would have the sink talk to the auxiliary outputs which I don't know that's, that's above me but other than that you know it's it's not that complicated you'll say you'll you saw my setup um any sound can any sound shop can get it hooked up for you and to be honest it sounds great adding the radio actually increased the sound quality um i didn't think it would but it did so there you go those are the pros and cons and let's wrap this thing up and i'll let you guys get back to whatever you were doing before you watch this all right guys welcome back so i think i covered everything from all the comments that I had received uh, from you guys and after using this thing for almost six months I can say look it had its quirks in the beginning but being able to um, talk to somebody at Autotech Pro helped they sent me new updates and everything was fixed in an update and I noticed that every couple of weeks they come out with more with a new update and it fixes something else and then you know it looks like it's a progress to slowly uh, make this thing better which is great and having purchasing this from a company that I can actually talk to made it a whole lot better so um, you know running into issues with Bluetooth was all corrected running into sound issues was all corrected um, the unit never ran slow for me it's always run you know pretty good and very responsive so if i had to recommend it i would definitely say hey you know go for it this thing works great and it seems as though now with all the updates in the firmware it seems to be running pretty steady i haven't had any issues with mine i haven't had to reboot it since maybe the first couple weeks i got it other than that it runs fine every once in a while i may reboot it just to kind of clear the cache and you know because this is an Android tablet and if you have an Android tablet at home you know sometimes it gets slow and laggy you got to shut it off and turn it back on having a reboot does that for you and you may have to do that time to time I have to say though for real I know you guys may want to buy this somewhere cheaper you may find it cheaper I don't know how much cheaper but having um, you know tech support there at least some tech support definitely may be worth you spending the extra 50 or 100 bucks to get this thing um, I can't stress that enough guys um, you know a lot of these companies from China or whatever they'll sell you the product and then boom they vanish and you're left stuck with this radio and you got to figure it out yourself but for the most part it's been six months and I'm pleased so far um, I hope I answered all the comments that you guys had and if you have more comments leave them below and I'll address them in another video if you haven't seen how to install this thing please check out my video um, there's links here in the description and it popped up somewhere around here check it out and if you do decide to buy it I call these guys relentlessly to get a discount code for you guys um, you know you, it'll get it'll save you some money on this unit um, I can't recommend this enough it's worked well for me and I've gotten tons of comments and compliments about how this radio looks in my truck it looks factory it stands out from the other ones that look like you know somebody just slapped an Android tablet in your car and you could obviously tell that they're trying too hard yeah 
So two thumbs up for this radio. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. That's what helps the channel the most. Leave a comment below. Subscribe if you haven't to stay in tune with more of my DIY videos. Um, I've done a bunch of F-150 mods on my truck. And, you know, if you're interested, check them out. Uh, there's some pretty easy mods that you can make to make your truck look better. So, yeah, go ahead, check it, check it out. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video.